I got very British at the weekends. I did. I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm body shaming you. I'm torturing you psychology. Psychologically, it's so horrible. They're like, it's the job. You know, they're very cool about it. <laughs> what a job. It's an amazing job. I came to it knowing about the project a uh, little and having read the novel and then Jane's script. Jane Campion came to me and we sort of had a discussion which I thought was a prequel to an audition and it turned out to kind of be it. We looked at a lookbook, sort of unexpectedly sensual pictures of the era, whether it was um, cow hands relaxing by a kind of uh, a stream or a levee or a little lake or whether it was these sort of odd semi-erotic photographs, half in shade, half exposed in light of men posing glimpses of sort of eroticism and then just some really beautiful archival photographs of rodeos and cattle drives and the different sort of performative aspects, uniform but also celebratory in their clothing and their manner. She talked about how she wanted to sensualize that period and that world and bring to life the interior struggle of this very complex man and place him at the center of this drama and honor Thomas Savage's brilliant novel. And I said, this is one, it's just, it just all sounds wonderful. And there was a bit of a gap in the conversation. I went, so are we doing this? And she went, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to meet my Phil. 25 years since our first run together, 1900 and nothing. It's a long time. What you doing? Getting mixed up with her. You are marvelous, Rose. We were married someday. We met up in London a couple of times, just getting to know each other and becoming friends and just seeing how we would collaborate and realizing how much we could trust each other, that there were no sides to us or hidden agendas. We just really wanted to make the best out of this and then really facilitating, really um, encouraging and supportive of me shifting myself from, just let's put it this way, my, you know, I, I, my default mode is being a little apologetic and uh, a bit of a people pleaser and, and feel is as far away from that as possible. She said, look, what do you feel insecure about? What, what are the challenges? And I said, where do I begin, Jane? I mean, you know, I've got to play the banjo, I've got to roll the cigarette with one hand, I've got to be the expert horse rider, I've done a bit of that. But she went, well, you know, we'll get you music lessons. And I went, that's cool. Um, and I'll try and roll a cigarette by the time we start the film. but. I think I need I think I need to be inured in this place and this time somehow outside of my imagination and Montana was offered you know this amazing experience I had with Randy and his wife Jen uh, a really experienced cowboy who's a master horseman he taught me how to braid how to but also how to treat the hide how to cut it how to bevel it how to straighten it and then how to stretch it and start making rope basically and then use rope and horse ride and steer cattle in two different uh, ranches that he took me to in Montana the weeks I was there. Amazing, amazing places with amazing men and women who were incredibly eager to help me authenticate the experience. And then, you know, during the filming, she just gave me full permission to be him. She, she introduced me to the cast, I mean, to the crew, sorry, as Phil and said, look, then it looks very nice. We meet him at the end of the shoot. This is Phil. You're working with him. And that was it. No, I sort of I sort of asked for it. I said, look, I want to go the whole way with you, but I think you've got to explain it. She went, oh, you're such a people pleaser. I said, I think I am, and I'm very apologetic, and I don't want to make grown men and women suffer an actor, you know, you know uh, forcing them to call um, them by their character name unless it's, uh, it's something that's kind of mutually accepted and talked about and agreed at the beginning. We had this very powerful Maori blessing, and then uh, she introduced the the crew to the cast that were there. I think it was just me and Kirsten that day, possibly Cody, not Jesse, and yeah, um, she introduced me as Phil. Um, the first day was hard. The internal critic was far louder than the kind of confidence or the voice of Phil, the work we'd done. But by the end of that day, I'd, I'd owned a bit of it, at least, and then just took the next step and uh, with more and more confidence. It's the longest I've ever been in character. But you know, we're in New Zealand, there are all sorts of technical reasons. I wasn't surrounded by America or Americans, so there was that to hold on to the character for, but also how far away, I guess, he, would, he is from me. And just to try and, try and give as much possibility to being him as I possibly could, you know? And that just meant slightly different all day approach as opposed to on and off. I got very British at the weekends. I did, I was like, I'm so sorry, I'm body shaming you, I'm torturing you psychology, psychologically it's so horrible. They're like, it's the job, you know, they're very cool about it. <laughs> what a job, it's an amazing job. But yeah, there are times when you kind of go, wow, okay. It's a heavy thing to do on a day and you kind of want to reconnect with the human beings who you're playing with, just to reassure them that it's not, yeah, there's no sort of 
subsidiary joy to it. It's it's a job. So yeah, I did. I reconnected at the weekends, and we and we're really good friends. And we all got it. We're all on the same page. It's three brilliant, brilliant actors for me to be doing this work with, and they were incredibly supportive of me and of what I needed to get there. I wonder what little lady made these. I did, sir. Well, Brother Phil? Jane's just a superlative director. She's been a champion and shown people women have every right to be behind a camera just as much as men do, and proven it with extraordinary work in her career. For me, it's not, it's not really about gender. It's just about sensitivity and appreciation for the balance of needs on a set, you know? Um, there are lots of people with lots of questions, lots of people need lots of time. It's not just about actors, it's not just about the camera, it's everything, it's all of it all together. And, uh, but on a day-to-day -day shoot, you know, she just, it's, I don't, I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't sing to me as being a different feeling, you know? Jane is just has an exceptional talent, and I think what she's tackled in her films before, you know, for me, everyone going, oh, you're the first male lead in a Jane Campion film, how does that feel? I just, I, I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know. <laughs> know how it's what to compare it to you know it's for people outside to judge it objectively I think but subjectively when you're in it it's just she's a phenomenal director she's she, she for an actor she facilitates process she brings out such raw direct and honest performances from her actors and that's immediately one of the appeals of wanting to work with Jane and she does it in all sorts of ways some very peculiar some very left field some very direct um, you know, she got Jesse and I to waltz to just bring together our bodies and create an intimacy between two brothers who, while pushing and pulling against each other in the drama, have lived a life tied at the hip of codependency. And um, the oddity of that for us now, you know, something we had to break through and get to the a sort of uh, feeling of the sensuality of. It, just, it was a great idea. It was sort of bizarre and giggly and fun, but there was also a profound connection that happened in that moment and uh, came out of a, a, a you know, a sweet but strange suggestion. Open up the gate, let him out. You sure he's not ready? Go on, let him out. It's just a man, Peter. Only another man. <laughs> that makes you feel very vulnerable when you're when you're trying to do something that requires a lifetime's worth of skill and you've only had a few months. Doing a whistle and it just coming out as air and, and no sound, um, fudging a cigarette, any moments, or, and the banjo, the banjo. I mean, the banjo is the most sort of skilled thing I really had to do in it. And any time I hit a bum note or just, just it sounded off, I, it would bring me out, you know. And being physically and psychologically free in those private moments, that, that took a bit of a, a bit of a leap. That was a day that was coming up. It was sort of a build in my head. But actually on the day, it was very, very liberating. And it's remarkable what that does, the freedom it gives you to be that exposed as a character. It just kind of, it, it loosens everything. And like I said, I had so much support and I was working with someone who felt equally anxious about what she was doing at times. And to hold her hand and run into the fire and jump off the cliff together or whatever the, stronger metaphor is that that's that's an amazing thing and to have that friendship and that collaboration is gold and that's james <laughs>